It's Crossover Thursday here on the Locked On Podcast Network. I'm John Butchko, the host of Locked On Jets, alongside my colleague Joe Marino, the host of Locked On Bills. Get ready for week six action. Buffalo Bills visiting MetLife Stadium to take on the New York Jets Monday Night Football. Of course, these two teams played at MetLife Stadium Monday night a year ago. A game I think like both fan bases would love to forget because the Jets lost Aaron Rodgers for the season and the Bills lost the game on a, an overtime punt return by Xavier Gibson. Uh, Joe, hopefully this game goes better for both teams this time. It will be Jeff Ulbrich's debut as Jets head coach. Uh, what are your keys to victory for the Buffalo Bills? Yeah, it's uh, interesting kind of going back to the scene of the crime, like you mentioned, for both teams. I think there's three things that are really important for the Bills on on Monday Night Football. Uh, number one is efficiency in the passing game. You know, uh, Robert Sala has said it in the past, and I know he's not the head coach, but I think the principle remains. The Jets are a team that are willing to dare Josh Allen to be patient with the football. And boy, was he ever patient the first three weeks of the season. He's so patient. He just did all the smart, right things with the ball. It was so beautiful. And the last couple of weeks, he's gotten away from that. And he hasn't thrown an interception this year, which I know is a big storyline with Josh Allen. And that's great. Um, but this wouldn't be the week to suddenly start being more risk willing uh, in, with the football. DJ Reed's obviously playing out of his mind this year. And Sauce Gardner is a really good corner as well. And, and so I think the Bills need to be willing to revert to being efficient with the passing game, getting the backs involved, getting the tight ends involved. Uh, Khalil Shakir, if he's available to play, this isn't the week to go big play hunting and throwing the ball down the field. It's time to get back to efficiency in the passing game. So for me, that's number one. Number two is you got to play with an awareness of the game script. Um, there's some strange dynamics in this game. You have a Jets team that just fired their head coach in week five. Um, they're coming after playing in London. They chose not to have their bye week. Uh, this week, they were willing to play a game. And so those are weird dynamics of certainly some injuries on uh, on the Jets side of things that we need to monitor. But also you have a Bills team that's looking to get out of a rut. They've lost two in a row. Not normal for the Bills. In fact, since 2020, the Bills until last week were 14 and four coming after a loss. They don't typically lose two in a row. And now they're staring at a possibility of losing three in a row. And, you know, it to me, it changes the dynamics of the season for the Jets. Like we talked about in the opening segment. You know, this was probably thought of as a move to galvanize the troops here with the Jets as they are not wanting to let the season kind of get away and make the 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 path difficult for them. It's it's still open, right? For whatever you want to think about it, the Bills certainly haven't played at a level that makes you say, this is their division and they're going to run away with it, right? I, I, I know that the Patriots and the Dolphins don't look great, but two will come back at some point and this Jets team obviously is trying to rally here. And so... I think this is a turning point. And so you, I think you have to play with an awareness of game script. Like I mentioned, only no interceptions for Josh Allen this year, two offensive turnovers at total for the Bills. Like this isn't this isn't the the game to feel like everything has to wake up. This is there's a good chance this is a defensive struggle on Monday night football where you know, the Jets we've talked about their own offensive issues. The Bills offense has not been good the last 2 weeks. So if a drive ends in a kick, that's probably okay. I think you have to be willing to embrace the style of game. That probably is going to happen on Monday night. And the number three is don't lose the game on special teams. Um, I think the Jets, if there's been something good about them that's been consistently good, it's that they're good on special teams. Uh, punting game, they're, they're, they cover kicks and punts. Their return game, usually pretty good. They've blocked a punt already this year. And I, not that, I mean, the Bills have been up and down on special teams. They've had a of an extra point block this year. They've had some field goal miscues. They've given up a kick return for a touchdown. Um, they lost to the Jets on Monday Night Football in overtime because of that. And so you start to look in where the margins are and where you know the Jets can find an advantage. I'm sure they're thinking about special teams, and I think the Bills have to be very careful uh, to not let that be a, a determining factor on Monday night. Great, uh, great analysis, Joe. I think for the Jets, the first key is just have a good week of preparation. And I, I know, look, I know you can say that every week, but there's so many interesting dynamics, as you mentioned, about this week for the Jets. Uh, Jeff Ulbert taking over. And as we talked about earlier in the show, this was a shock to the system for a lot of guys on that Jets team. I, I think for all of Robert Sala's uh, faults, he did. He had not lost that locker room. This was not a case like Josh McDaniels in Las Vegas a year ago, where the players are going to be refreshed to have a new voice. I think there was some surprise. So 
for Jeff Albrecht, it's going to be about getting the players in the right headspace for this game. And the Jets also need to figure out who's running the offense this week. Joe, I don't know who's in charge of the Jets offense because as we talked about, uh, Salah was about to demote Hackett and Albrecht said, we're going to take a look at everything. So I couldn't tell you who's going to be calling the plays for the Jets Monday night. So the, a lot of it's just going to be about just having a good week of preparation. And well, again, while that's true every week, I think with so much in transition for the Jets, that's going to be, have to be a big focus. Um, the second thing for the Jets is I think they need to be disciplined in their pass rush lanes. Um, there are a couple of times this year where they've been hurt by quarterback scrambles, uh, especially week two against Tennessee, against Will Levis. Uh, Jets almost lost that game. One of the biggest reasons was they were having trouble uh, with Levis breaking breaking plays, you know, taking the ball down the field. Josh Allen, obviously a very mobile quarterback, very adept. If you give him room to run and nobody's open, he's, he can make big plays. The third thing for the Jets for me is – they need to figure out how to unlock this downfield passing game. Um, it's a little tricky because the Jets don't really have a great speed guy uh, in their receiving group. They have, you know, Garrett Wilson, who's quick, se quick separator, good, good after the catch guy, a good route runner. But you know, despite the four three forty, he was timed out in the combine. Not really a great deep threat. Um, Mike Williams, a good back shoulder guy. He can win a contested ball down the air. He's a guy I think they need to get involved more. He's been kind of an afterthought, as I mentioned, in this offense. Had a big catch on a back shoulder throw in the fourth quarter, week two against Tennessee. One of the pivotal plays in that win on a second and 16. Rodgers found him. Little involved two weeks ago against Denver. But he's, he hasn't really found his role in the offense. And I think you know he might be a guy who can help them in that area. Um, Alan Lazard, three, you know, three. Three balls hit his hand last week. All of them would have been big plays that fell to the ground, didn't complete, did have a touchdown. But they just need to figure out a way to push the ball down the field. And with Rodgers right now, maybe a little uncomfortable uh, with his pass protection. And with Rodgers banged up, you know, it's amazing because Aaron Rodgers left that game against the Vikings with a sprained ankle. There's been so much crazy going on, going on around the Jets this week. We haven't really talked much about the fact Rodgers might be playing at less than 100%, which would normally be storyline number one. Um, he's not really that comfortable with his offensive line right now. So if the Jets need to max protect, they need to leave a few guys in. They need to figure out a way to produce big plays in this passing game because they just have not been doing that yet at this point this season. Yeah, it sounds like um, one, te one team's trying to produce big plays in the passing game and it's not really working. And then, of course, you mentioned the Jets and kind of their own issues there. So it's almost like if if either team starts hitting ex hitting explosives in the passing game, especially against – these defenses that are historically very good at not allowing explosive plays in the passing game, you know, that would be, that would be interesting if the vertical passing game wakes up for either team this week. Well, Joe, it was great chatting with you. I always enjoy our, our discussions before Jets play the Bills. I'm glad we get to do it twice a year. And I look forward to chatting with you when the Jets head up to Buffalo a little bit later in the season. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. And, and we'll see, we'll see where these teams are at. Maybe it's uh one of them's running away with things. Maybe the season's gotten off the rails for somebody uh, that's why you got to play them all and you see what happens, right? As bleak as this game feels, first place is on the line in the AFC East. The winner of this game is going to be in first place. Someone's going to be the four seed in the AFC this year, right?